Mercy on me. Methinks nobody should be sad but I. Yet I remember when I was in France, young gentlemen were as sad as night, only for wantonness. By my Christendom, if I were out of prison and kept sheep, I'd be as merry as the day is long. And so I should be here. But that I doubt my uncle practices more harm to me. He is afraid of me, and I of him. Is it my fault I was Geoffrey's son? No, indeed it's not. And I would to heaven if I were your son. So you'd love me, Hubert. Bless you, fair dame, I am not you known, though in your state of honour I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you'll take a homely one's advice, be not found here, hence with your little ones. To fright you thus, methinks, I am too savage. To do worst you were fell cruelty, which is to nigh your person. Heaven preserve you, I dare abide no longer. Alack, why am I sent for to a king before I have shook off the regal thoughts wherewith I reigned? I hardly yet have learned to insinuate, flatter, bow and bend my limbs, give sorrow, leave a while to tutor me to this submission. Yet I well remember the favours of these men. Were they not mine? Did they not sometime cry all hail to me? So Judas did to Christ, but he in twelve found truth in all but one. I in twelve thousand, none. God save the king. Will no man say amen? Am I both priest and clerk? Well then, amen. Is this the scourge of France? Is this the Talbot so feared abroad, that with his name the mothers still their babes? <laughs> I see report is fabulous and false. I thought I should have seen some Hercules, a second Hector for his grim aspect. Alas, this is a child, a silly dwarf. It cannot be this weak and rival shrimp should strike such terror into his enemies. Um, I would not be the executioner. I fly thee, for I would not injure thee. Thou tells me there's murder in mine eye. It is pretty sure and very probable that eyes are the frailest and softest things who shut their cower gates on atomies, should be called tyrants, butchers, murderers. Now I do frown on thee with all my heart, and if mine eyes can wound, now let them kill thee. Now counterfeit to swoon, why now fall down? Or if thou canst not, Oh, for shame, for shame. Lie not to say that mine eyes are murderers. I will not be called thy executioner. I fly thee, for I would not injure thee. Thou tell'st me there is murder in mine eye? Tis pretty sure and very probable that eyes are the frailest and softest things who shut their coward gates on atomies should be called tyrants, butchers, murderers. Now I do frown upon thee with, with all of my heart, and if my eyes can wound, now let them kill thee. Now counterfeit to swoon, why now fall down? And if thou canst not, oh, for shame, for shame, lie not, say mine eyes are murderers. Environed he was with many foes, and stood against them as the hope of Troy, against the Greeks that would have entered Troy. But Hercules himself must yield to odds, and many strokes, though a little axe, 
hew down and fell the hardest timbered oak. By many hands, your father was subdued, but only slaughtered by the ireful arm of unrelenting Clifford and the Queen. Lucetta, now that we're alone, what dost thou counsel me to fall in love? I, madam, so you stumble not unheedfully. As of all the fair resort of gentlemen, that parley encounter me. In thy opinion, which is the worthiest of my love? Please, you repeat their names and I'll show you my mind according to my shallow, simple skill. What thinkest thou of Sir Eglamour? As a knight, well spoken, neat and fine, but where are you? He never should be mine. What thinkest thou of rich Mercatio? Well of his wealth, but as of himself, so-so. What thinkest thou of gentle Proteus? Lord, Lord, to see what folly reigns us in. <laughs> How now? What is this passion at his name? Dear madam, tis a passing shame that I, unworthy body as I am, should censor thus on lovely gentlemen. But why of Proteus, as of all the rest? Then thus, of any good, I think him best? Your reason. I have no other reason than a woman's reason. I think him so because I think him so. And what is have me cast my love on him? I, if you thought your love not cast away. Mercy on me. Methinks nobody should be sad but I. Yet I remember when I was in France, young gentlemen would be as sad as knights, only for wantonness. For my Christendom, so I wrote to prison and kept sheep, I should be as merry as the day is long. And so I would be here. But that I doubt, my uncle practices more harm to me. He is afraid of me, and I of him. Is it my fault that I was Geoffrey's son? No, indeed, it's not. When I were to heaven, I were your son. So you would love me, Hubert. Is this the scourge of France? Is this the Talbot so much feared abroad that with his name the mothers steal their babes? I see report is fabulous and false. I thought I should have seen some Hercules or a second Hector for his grim aspect and large proportion of his strong-knit limbs. Alas! This is a child. It cannot be this weak and rival shrimp that should strike such terror to his enemies. Mercy on me. Methinks nobody should be as sad but I. Yet, I remember when I was in France, young gentlemen would be as sad as night, only for wantonness. By my Christendom, so I were out of prison and kept sheep. I should be as merry as the day is long, and so I should be here. And that I doubt, my uncle practices more harm to me. He's afraid of me, and I of him. Is it my fault I was Geoffrey's son? N no, indeed it's not. And I were to heaven, I were your son. So you would love me, Hubert. Forty-three by William Shakespeare. When most I wink, then do mine eyes best see, for all the day they view things unrespected. But when I sleep, in dreams they look on thee, and darkly bright are bright and dark directed. Then thou, whose shadows shadows doth make bright, how would thy shadows form, form happy show to thy clear day? With they much clearer light, when to unseeing eyes a shade shines so. How would, I say, mine eyes be blessed made by looking on thee in the living day, when in dead night thy fair and perfect shade through heavy sleep on sightless eyes doth stay, all days and nights to see till I see thee, and nights bright days 
when dreams do show thee me. And at our stamp, hear o'er and o'er one fools, he murder cries and help from Athens calls. Their sense thus weak, loss with their fears thus strong, made senseless things begin to do them wrong. For <laughs> briars and thorns at their apparel snatch, some sleeves, some hats, from yielders all things catch. I led them on in this distracted fear and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When at that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straight away loved an ass. <laughs> good, I would not be thy executioner. I fly thee, for I would not injure thee. Thou tells me there is murder in my eyes? Tis pretty, sure, and very probable that eyes are the frailest and softest things who shut their coward gates on atomies should be called tyrants, butchers, murderers. Now I do frown on thee with all my heart, and if my eyes can wound, now let them kill thee. Now counterfeit to swoon. Why now fall down? And if thou cannot, Oh, for shame, for shame, lie not, to say my eyes are murderers. When most I wink, then do mine eyes best see, for all the day they view things unrespected. But when I sleep, in dreams they look on thee, and darkly bright are bright and dark directed. Then thou whose shadow, shadows doth make bright, how would thy shadows form, form happy show, to the clear day with thy much clearer light, when to unseeing eyes thy shade shines so? How would, I say, mine eyes be blessed made, than by looking on thee in the living day, when in dead night thy fair in perfect shade, through heavy sleep on sightless eyes doth stay? All days and nights to see till I see thee, and night's bright days when dreams do show me thee. Is this the scourge of France? Is this the Tabalt so much feared abroad that with his name, the mother still their babes? <laughs> I see report is fabulous and false. I thought I should have seen some Hercules, a second Hector from this grim aspect and large proportion of his strong-knit limbs. Alas, it's the child, a silly dwarf. It cannot be this weak and rival shrimp to strike such terror to his enemies. Bless you. Fair dame, I am not to you known, though in your state of honour I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you will take a homely one's advice, be not found here. Hence with your little ones, to fright you thus methinks I am too savage. To do worse to you were fell cruelty, which is to nigh your person. Heaven preserve you, I dare abide no longer. <laughs> 